It's a little known fact that brain injury, which is generally thought to cause the loss or impairment of a cognitive ability, can in some cases also cause the appearance of extreme skills, especially in mathematics, geometry, music, and artistic expression. Anecdotal historical evidence of servants is common. The example I use in the book is the story of blind Tom Wiggins, who despite being blind and possibly autistic, became the first African American to give a command performance at the White House for President James Buchanan. Plus, popular portrayals like Dustin Hoffman's character in the movie Rain Man have served to romanticize the idea in the public's mind. Often these servants, however, are born with otherwise debilitating neurological disorders and yet still possess these extreme mental powers. However, growing evidence is beginning to show that such conditions are more than just an accident of birth. They are in fact the result of a specific brain injury. One of the most surprising cases is the story of Daniel Tamet, who became a synesthete following his epileptic seizures at age three. For most synesthetes, this condition causes numbers to glow a slightly distinct color. However, Temet's condition came with a corresponding vision of a shape, and Temet credits his synesthesia with his ability to make incredibly complex calculations at lightning speed. For many with synesthesia, there is an interaction between abstract cognitive symbols and perceived sensory experience, which allows for deeper processing of certain kinds of information, like extreme mathematical skills that are demonstrated by Tamet. Interestingly, most people who have the condition do not even realize they have it, and finding out if one has the condition requires a degree of metacognitive realization. In fact, diagnosing synesthesia was not really possible until fairly recently. There are several synesthesia tests that, while not standardized, identify the condition by how quickly the test subject is able to identify the frequency of a number two, let's say, in a, a field of number fives. Um, so because synesthetes perceive a uniform color corresponding to a given digit, they can identify numbers from a field of differing numbers pretty quickly and with fewer mistakes than non-synesthetes. In a sense, unlike the earlier discussed Warnickes or neglect patients who have lost the ability to consciously perceive a dimension of the cognitive world that undamaged individuals just take for granted, these individuals suddenly become aware of a perceptual dimension that was previously repressed to their undamaged brain. This perhaps suggests that there are potentially neurological governors that restrict our conscious access to certain categories of perception and thereby restrict our ability to metacognitively process that information. This line of research also invites the question of whether metacognition or other processes could unlock these perceptual restrictions. For example, Schneider et al demonstrated that transcranial magnetic pulses can be applied to the left frontal temporal lobe of, you know, functionally normal individuals to produce states of improved mathematical thinking akin to um, the creative performances that is seen in savants. Perhaps as we come to understand what is occurring in acquired savant syndrome, we'll be able to develop new techniques that enable individuals to unlock skills that under normal circumstances are hidden to our own perception.